The casting process for the 1972 movie, The Godfather, was a meticulous task overseen by producer Albert Rudy and director Francis Ford Coppola. Marlon Brando was chosen for the role of Don Vito Corleone after Coppola fought for him. Despite concerns from the studio about his age and recent box office failures, Brando agreed to take a lower salary in exchange for a percentage of the profits, which turned out to be a wise decision. For the role of Michael Corleone, several actors were considered, including Robert Redford, Warren Beatty, and Jack Nicholson. However, Paramount executives wanted an unknown actor, and Coppola's choice was Al Pacino, who had already been in several films but was not yet a big name. Pacino's performance left a lasting impression during screen tests, and he was eventually cast. James Caan, Robert Duvall, and Diane Keaton were cast as Sonny, Tom Hagen, and Kay Adams, respectively, after successful auditions and chemistry tests with Pacino and Brando. Khan was chosen for his tough guy persona, while Duvall's previous work with Coppola on the Rain People helped secure his role. Keaton was initially rejected by Coppola due to her comedic background, but after further consideration, he decided she was right for the part. The casting of The Godfather also included actors of Italian descent to ensure authenticity. Richard Castellano, Abe Vigoda, and Talia Shire were cast as Clemenza, Tessio, and Connie Corleone, respectively. Castellano and Vigoda were chosen for their comedic timing and ability to balance humor with the film's darker themes. Shire, who is Coppola's sister, was cast as Connie after her successful audition. Throughout the casting process, Coppola and Rudy aimed to create a cohesive ensemble that could bring the complex characters and intricate storylines of The Godfather to life. Their choices proved successful as the film became a cultural phenomenon and solidified the careers of many of its actors. Francis Ford Coppola, the director of The Godfather, had a clear vision to create a cinematic masterpiece that delved into the inner workings of the Corleone family, a powerful mafia clan. Coppola's approach was deeply rooted in his background in theater and his love for Italian neorealism. He aimed to tell the story in a realistic and naturalistic way, focusing on the character's emotions and motivations. Coppola's creative influences included Italian filmmakers like Lucino Visconti and Federico Fellini, as well as American directors such as Elia Kazan. He sought to combine the best of both worlds, creating a film that was both epic and intimate. Coppola's style is characterized by his use of long takes, subtle camera movements, and a muted color palette. He also employed a variety of visual motifs, such as the use of shadows and mirrors to convey the film's themes of power, corruption, and identity. In bringing The Godfather to life, Coppola worked closely with his cast and crew. He collaborated with cinematographer Gordon Willis to create the film's distinctive look, and he worked with the actors to develop their characters and performances. Coppola's approach was hands-on and collaborative, and he encouraged his cast and crew to contribute their own ideas and insights. One of Coppola's key contributions to The Godfather was his ability to balance the film's various elements, from its complex narrative to its rich visual style. He also brought a deep understanding of the material, having read Mario Puzo's novel several times before beginning production. Coppola's vision for The Godfather was to create a film that was both entertaining and thought-provoking, a film that would explore the darker aspects of the American dream. In the end, Coppola's directorial vision for The Godfather paid off, as the film went on to become one of the most critically and commercially successful films of all time. Its influence can still be felt today in everything from contemporary cinema to popular culture. What are you going to do? Nice college boy, eh? They want to get mixed up in the family business? Now you want to gun... The Godfather, released in 1972, is a classic movie that has stood the test of time. It's a crime drama directed by Francis Ford Coppola, based on Mario Puzo's novel of the same name. The movie tells the story of the Corleone family, a powerful Italian-American mafia clan. This movie has had a significant impact on my life. It was my first introduction to the world of filmmaking, and it sparked my interest in cinema. The Godfather's compelling storytelling, complex characters, and stunning cinematography have inspired me to pursue a career in film. There are many fascinating facts about this movie that not many people know.
For instance, did you know that the famous horse head scene was inspired by a real life event? Or that the movie was almost directed by Sergio Leone, the director of the Dollars Trilogy? These lesser known facts and anecdotes make watching The Godfather even more enjoyable. The movie also has many funny, shocking, and sad moments that will keep you engaged throughout. From the iconic lines to the unforgettable performances, The Godfather is a movie that has something for everyone. Do you have a cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Whether it's your favorite scene, a line that resonated with you, or a moment that marked you, we want to know. So, keep watching this video to learn more about The Godfather and its enduring legacy. Firearms. If you interfere, you'll have to appear before a judge in the morning and show cause. The production of The Godfather in 1972 was a massive undertaking involving intricate set design, various locations, and logistical challenges. The movie sets were built at Paramount Studios in California, where a New York City street was recreated to capture the authentic feel of the film's setting. This set included real cobblestones, sewer grates, and fire hydrants, adding to the film's authenticity. The production also utilized several external locations, including New York's St. Patrick's Cathedral and Long Beach's Villa Vista del Monte, which served as the exterior for the Corleone family compound. Filming in these locations presented logistical challenges, such as coordinating with local authorities and managing crowds. One innovative technique employed during production was the use of low-light photography. Cinematographer Gordon Willis used this technique to create a dark, moody atmosphere that added depth and complexity to the film's visual style. This approach was unconventional at the time and required careful planning and execution. Another challenge was managing the large cast, which included several high-profile actors. Director Francis Ford Coppola worked closely with the cast to ensure their performances aligned with his vision for the film. The result was a compelling and enduring piece of cinema that has left a lasting impact on the film industry. What's the matter? The Godfather, directed by Francis Ford Coppola, and released in 1972, has stood the test of time as a classic gangster film. Its presence on cable channels is a testament to its enduring popularity. The film's impact is such that even minor scenes and characters remain etched in the memory of those who have seen it. The Godfather's ensemble cast, including Marlon Brando, Al Pacino, James Caan, and Robert Duvall, delivered powerful performances that made them overnight stars. The film's story revolves around the Corleone family, a powerful mafia clan, and the challenges they face as they navigate the criminal underworld. The Godfather is known for its memorable scenes, such as Sonny's brutal beating of Carlo, the mob hit on Sonny at the Causeway, and Michael's restaurant rubout of Salazzo and McCluskey. The film's climax, which features Michael's baptism as he orders the deaths of his enemies, is a masterclass in storytelling. The film's direction, cinematography, and editing are top-notch, making every scene feel larger than life. The Godfather's influence on popular culture is undeniable, and it has inspired countless films and television shows in the gangster genre. In conclusion, The Godfather is a must-watch film for anyone interested in gangster movies or classic American cinema. Its enduring legacy and impact on popular culture make it a valuable contribution to the world of film. The Godfather, a 1972 classic film, is renowned for its captivating score and soundtrack. Nino Rota, the Italian composer, skillfully crafted the music to complement the narrative and emotional tone of the movie. The score is a tapestry of various themes, each representing different characters and storylines. Rota's main theme, a waltz-like melody, is a haunting piece that resonates with the film's emotional depth. It is often played on a solo flute, symbolizing the isolation and loneliness of the Corleone family. The love theme speaks softly. Love is a contrastingly gentle piece, reflecting the softer, vulnerable side of the characters. The soundtrack also includes various operatic areas chosen to reflect the Italian heritage of the characters. These pieces, often played in the background during family gatherings, add a layer of authenticity and cultural richness to the film. The creation of the score was a collaborative effort between Rhoda and director Francis Ford Coppola. They worked closely to ensure that the music aligned with the film's narrative and emotional tone. 
Rhoda watched the film several times, taking notes on each scene and how it could be enhanced by music. The musicians involved in the recording process also played a crucial role. The score was performed by the Rome Symphony Orchestra, who brought Rhoda's compositions to life with their skill and dedication. In conclusion, the score and soundtrack of The Godfather are an integral part of the film's enduring appeal. They provide a rich, captivating backdrop to the narrative, enhancing the emotional impact of the story. The music, like the film itself, has transcended its original context to become a classic in its own right. The hospital scenes in The Godfather were filmed in two separate locations. Exterior shots were taken at Bellevue Hospital's side entrance, while interior sequences were shot at the New York Eye and Ear Infirmary in Manhattan. George Lucas, as a favor to Francis Ford Coppola, created the mattress sequence, a montage of crime scene photos, and headlines about the war between the five families. Lucas used real crime scene photos, including one of Frank Nitti, who is shown lying near a chain link fence. Nitti didn't die from a murder, but instead shot himself. During the filming of this sequence, Carmine Coppola, the director's father, played the piano. Sofia Coppola, the director's daughter, appeared in all three Godfather films, although her roles in the first two films were uncredited. One of the most iconic scenes in The Godfather is the baptism sequence, where Michael Corleone becomes a godfather to his sister's baby while ordering the execution of his enemies. Director Francis Ford Coppola used parallel editing to contrast the sacred ceremony with the brutal murders, creating a powerful contrast that highlights the duality of Michael's character. The scene's impact comes from its juxtaposition of innocence and violence, emphasized by the haunting religious music and the baby's cries. Al Pacino's performance is chilling as he maintains a calm and focused demeanor while the chaos unfolds around him. Cinematographer Gordon Willis's use of shadows and darkness adds to the sense of moral ambiguity and impending doom. Another iconic moment is the horse's head scene, where the Corleones send a message to a Hollywood producer who refuses to give in to their demands. Coppola wanted to create a shocking and memorable image that would convey the ruthlessness of the Corleone family. The scene's impact comes from its unexpectedness and the surreal image of a severed horse's head in a bed. Marlon Brando's performance as Vito Corleone is also noteworthy, particularly in the opening scene where he interacts with his family and associates. Brando's use of subtle gestures and facial expressions conveys Vito's power and authority, while his soft-spoken voice and gentle demeanor towards his family reveal his softer side. Coppola used close-ups and medium shots to capture Brando's nuanced performance while Willis's use of warm colors and soft lighting creates a cozy and intimate atmosphere. The impact of these scenes on the audience is significant as they encapsulate the themes of power, loyalty, and family that are central to the film. The Godfather's iconic moments have transcended the world of cinema and become cultural touchstones that continue to resonate with audiences today. All its interest in the olive oil business, settling out here. Now move me. Al Pacino's portrayal of Michael Corleone in The Godfather Part II is ranked as one of the top heroic or villainous performances in American cinema. Interestingly, Marlon Brando, who played the original Don Corleone, was known for not memorizing his lines and reading from cue cards during filming. This was part of his method acting approach, where he believed in delivering authentic performances through cold reads. In the initial stages of casting for The Godfather, Richard Kant was a strong contender for the role of Don Corleone. His Italian heritage and the film's original low-budget concept worked in his favor. However, as the project gained prestige and the budget increased, a list actors like Anthony Quinn, Orson Welles, and Burt Lancaster were also considered. The role eventually went to Marlon Brando, and Richard Kant was cast as Don Barzini, Michael Corleone's rival. It's fascinating to note that Lawrence Olivier, considered one of the greatest actors of his time, was also in the running for the part of Don Corleone. Unfortunately, he had to decline due to illness. Despite these casting changes, The Godfather became a cinematic classic, showcasing the talents of its diverse cast and the vision of its Italian-American director, Francis Ford Coppola. Politicians in his pocket. He refused to share them. 
The Godfather, a 1972 movie directed by Francis Ford Coppola, had a profound cultural and social impact. It resonated with audiences due to its compelling storyline, complex characters, and exploration of themes like power, corruption, and family loyalty. The film's portrayal of the Italian-American Mafia was both intriguing and thought-provoking, leading to widespread discussions about organized crime and its impact on society. In terms of pop culture, The Godfather left an indelible mark. Its iconic line, such as I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse, and characters like the powerful patriarch Vito Corleone have been frequently referenced and parodied in various media. The film also influenced fashion trends, with its sharp suits and sunglasses becoming symbols of power and style. Moreover, The Godfather contributed to discussions on relevant social themes. It explored the immigrant experience and the struggle for acceptance in American society, offering a nuanced portrayal of Italian Americans. The film also delved into the corrupting influence of power and the moral complexities of the characters' actions, prompting viewers to reflect on their own values and ethics. In essence, The Godfather's enduring popularity and influence can be attributed to its rich storytelling, compelling characters, and exploration of timeless themes. It not only resonated with audiences, but also significantly impacted pop culture and sparked important social discussions. In The Godfather, a pivotal scene occurs in front of Dempsey's Manasseh restaurant, named after Jack Dempsey, the famous boxer who was born in Manasseh, Colorado. The film features Marlon Brando, who topped him ascends the Big 50 Cinema's Greatest Legends poll in 29. Brando's powerful performance in The Godfather helped establish his place in cinema history. Interestingly, Roman Coppola, son of The Godfather director Francis Ford Coppola, has directed all of the music videos for the American rock band, The Strokes. Marlon Brando's co-stars in The Godfather, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino, finished second and third, respectively, in MSN's poll. The film's enduring legacy and impact on cinema are undeniable with its compelling storyline and unforgettable characters. The Godfather, directed by Francis Ford Coppola and based on Mario Puzo's best-selling novel, was released in 1972 to widespread critical acclaim and audience admiration. Released by Paramount Pictures, the film gained a massive following and is now considered a classic in American cinema. The Godfather received overwhelmingly positive reviews from critics. Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times praised the film, stating, The Godfather is one of the most brutal and moving chronicles of American life ever filmed. Paul and Kale of the New Yorker called it the greatest movie I've ever seen and an amazing emotional achievement. Time Magazine's Jay Cox described it as a magnificent, engrossing, and disturbing work. Audiences also embraced the film, making it a major commercial success. It was the highest grossing film of 1972, and remained the highest grossing film in history until the release of Jaws in 1975. The Godfather received numerous awards and nominations. It won the Academy Award for Best Picture, Best Actor, and Best Adapted Screenplay. It was also nominated for Best Director, Best Supporting Actor, Best Costume Design, Best Film Editing, and Best Sound. The film's accolades are significant for those involved in the production. For Francis Ford Coppola, it established him as a major director and solidified his reputation in Hollywood. The film's success also helped launch the careers of several actors, including Al Pacino, James Caan, and Robert Duvall. The Godfather's impact on American cinema is undeniable. It has been praised for its complex characters, intricate storytelling, and masterful direction. The film's themes of power, loyalty, and family have resonated with audiences for decades and continue to be studied and analyzed by film scholars and enthusiasts alike. The Godfather's legacy as a classic of American cinema is secure, and its influence can still be felt in contemporary films and television shows. We lose our political contacts and half our strength. The other New York families might... In the film The Godfather, Michael Corleone, played by Al Pacino, is followed by a group of chaperones while on a walk with Apollonia, which is humorously compared to a herd of goats by the sound of goat bells. Before Robert Duvall was cast as Tom Hagen, James Caan was considered for the role, but ended up playing Sonny Corleone in both The Godfather and its sequel. 
Pacino is notable for being one of three actors to receive Oscar nominations for playing the same character in different films, with both The Godfather and The Godfather Part II winning Best Picture. Hard-hearted man, that it's not all dollars and cents. She was beautiful. She was young. During the filming of The Godfather, Marlon Brando, who played the patriarch Vito Corleone, was known for his unpredictable behavior. To get the right emotion in a scene where he has to squeeze a cat, Brando brought his own stray cats to the set. The cat he chose to use wasn't responding as he wanted, so he ended up using a stuffed animal for the scene instead. In another instance, Brando decided to alter his appearance by stuffing his cheeks with tissue and scarf tape to create the iconic puffy face look of Vito Corleone. This change was so drastic that the makeup artist, Dick Smith, had to adjust the prosthetics to fit Brando's new facial structure. The now iconic horse's head scene was initially a point of contention between director Francis Ford Coppola and Paramount Pictures. Coppola wanted to use a real horse's head, but the studio was hesitant due to animal rights concerns. Eventually, they reached a compromise a real horse's head would be used, but only if it came from a horse that had already been slaughtered for meat. During the filming of the wedding scene, the cast and crew had to deal with a sudden downpour. Instead of halting production, they decided to incorporate the rain into the scene, creating a more festive and lively atmosphere. James Caan, who played Sonny Corleone, had a contentious relationship with Brando on set. In one scene, Caan accidentally hit Brando for real during a heated argument. Brando, however, was unharmed and impressed with Caan's commitment to the scene. The film's iconic theme, composed by Nina Rota, was initially rejected by Paramount Pictures. They felt it sounded too similar to music from another film. After some tweaks and revisions, the theme was resubmitted and ultimately approved. These anecdotes offer a glimpse into the chaotic, yet creative, process behind the making of The Godfather. Despite the challenges faced during production, the film went on to become a cultural phenomenon and a lasting testament to the power of cinematic storytelling. So, now we're going to have to give him a day sometime next week. We'll discuss him when you come back from California. The photography in the 1972 film The Godfather, with its dark and moody look, was initially met with skepticism by Paramount Pictures executives. They deemed it a mistake and ordered for a different look. However, cinematographer Gordon Willis and director Francis Ford Coppola stood their ground, and their vision ultimately became a defining characteristic of the movie. In addition to the film's visual style, The Godfather also featured a talented cast, including Talia Shire and Joe Spinal. Shire appeared in three Best Picture Academy Award winners The Godfather, The Godfather Part Room 2, and Rocky. Spinal, too, had a role in all three films. The production of The Godfather was meticulous, as seen in the Christmas shopping scene featuring Michael and Kate. This scene required 143 extras, vintage cars, and period-appropriate streetlights and signs. The meticulous attention to detail extended to the crew, with 60 members present during the filming of the scene. Despite the challenges, the production team's dedication to authenticity helped make The Godfather a classic film. The Godfather, directed by Francis Ford Coppola and released in 1972, is a cornerstone of film history. Its innovative storytelling, character development, and thematic depth have significantly influenced subsequent filmmaking. The movie's portrayal of the Corleone family a powerful mafia clan enthralled audiences and left a lasting impact on the crime drama genre. One of the key aspects that set The Godfather apart was its focus on family dynamics within a criminal context. This approach provided a unique perspective, humanizing the characters and making the story more relatable. The film's iconic lines, such as I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse, and unforgettable performances, notably Marlon Brando as Vito Corleone and Al Pacino as Michael Corleone, further elevated its status. The Godfather's influence is evident in various aspects of future filmmaking. Its visual style, characterized by muted colors and meticulous framing, became a hallmark of the crime drama genre. Additionally, the film's intricate narrative structure, which weaves together multiple storylines, has inspired numerous filmmakers to explore complex narratives in their work. The Godfather also sparked a wave of movies and television shows inspired by its themes and characters. The sequels, The Godfather Part Remain 2 and The Godfather Part 3, further expanded the Corleone family saga 
while other films and series like Goodfellas, The Sopranos, and The Irishman drew inspiration from The Godfather's exploration of organized crime and family dynamics. In summary, The Godfather has left an indelible mark on film history, shaping the crime drama genre and influencing subsequent filmmakers with its innovative storytelling, compelling characters, and iconic performances. Its legacy continues to resonate in contemporary cinema and popular culture. The opening scene was inspired by a real mob wedding in New York City in 1956. It was meant to strengthen the alliance between two mob families. The wedding, attended by major mob bosses, featured singer Tony Bennett. The movie paid attention to detail, using cars with wooden bumpers, a result of the aftermath of World War II. Howard Stern's open invitation to the cast was taken up by Johnny Russo, who was interviewed on the show. The scene featuring Franco Corsero as the dying consigliere, Jenko Avendando, was initially filmed in The Godfather, but later deleted. However, it can be found in some television airings and in the 1977 version, The Godfather Saga. In this scene, Don Vito Corleone and his sons visit Jenko in the hospital as he is dying of cancer, attempting to console him. Jenko's death is still mentioned in the film when Sonny complains about not having a consigliere. Diane Keaton, who played Kay Adams in The Godfather, is one of 25 actresses to have won an Academy Award for their performance in a comedy, specifically for Annie Hall in 1977. Other actresses who have won for their comedic performances include Claudette Colbert, Judy Holliday, Audrey Hepburn, Goldie Hawn, Glenda Jackson, Maggie Smith, and Jessica Lange. The meeting between the heads of the mafioso and The Godfather was filmed in the boardroom of the Penn Central Railroad which explains the train mural scene behind Don Barzini. This location was used to add authenticity to the scene, making it more believable for the audience. Marlon Brando, known for his role in The Godfather, once declined the part of Vulcan in The Adventures of Baron Munchessinator director Terry Gilliam visited Brando to discuss the role, but Brando showed little interest. The role was later taken by Oliver Reed, who spent his time on set drinking and attempting to woo Uma Thurman. During the filming of The Godfather, Brando questioned Francis Ford Coppola's decision to cast Gianni Russo. Brando suggested recasting Russo, unaware that he was a former mafioso with a serious demeanor. Russo pulled Brando aside and threatened him, leaving Brando stunned and impressed. James Caan, another actor in The Godfather, turned down the role of Pop I. Doyle in The French Connection. Gene Hackman went on to win an Oscar for his performance in the film. These actors' decisions showcased the unpredictability of their careers and the various roles they were offered throughout their lives. Oh, what is enough time? We'll get there, Pop. We'll get there. Sofia Coppola's Oscar win for screenwriting in 2004 made her family, the Coppolas, the second family to have three generations of Oscar winners joining the Hustons. The cat held by Marlon Brando in the opening scene of The Godfather was a stray he found while on the lot at Paramount Pictures, and its purring muffled some of his dialogue. Brando, known for his free-spirited lifestyle in New York during the late 1940s, embraced this carefree attitude, which led to the need for looping most of his lines. Francis Ford Coppola, initially reluctant to direct The Godfather, changed his mind when he decided to portray the story as an allegory of American capitalism. This shift in perspective allowed him to explore the themes of the movie without glorifying the mafia or violence, which he felt would reflect poorly on his Italian Sicilian heritage. Al Pacino, who played a significant role in The Godfather, was offered the part of Harvey Dent Moface in Batman, the animated series, but he turned it down. Richard Maul eventually took on the role. Marlon Brando, who also starred in The Godfather, had a unique pre-performance routine. He enjoyed boxing and would often spar with stage crew members during his downtime. During one such impromptu match, he suffered a broken nose, which he intentionally left untreated to make it appear worse when he met with the play's producer. The resulting misalignment of his nose became a distinctive feature of his face, contributing to his iconic appearance. What is it? Hey, my sister's wet. 
in the production of The Godfather, several interesting decisions were made and events occurred behind the scenes. For instance, the producers wanted Al Pacino to wear lifts to appear taller next to co-star Marlon Brando. Brando, in turn, drew inspiration for his performance from Al Lettery, who played Salazzo. The two had become friends while working on a previous film, and Lettery introduced Brando to his mafia-connected relative, which helped Brando prepare for his role. Meanwhile, Francis Ford Coppola's mother, Natalia Coppola, had a brief appearance as a Genko Olive Oil Company switchboard operator, but her scene did not make it to the final cut. Despite these cuts, The Godfather remains a classic film with complex characters and compelling performances that continue to resonate with audiences today. We're reliable people, people are not going to be carried away. We're not murderers. After Marlon Brando's death, his annotated script for The Godfather was sold at a New York City auction for 12800 the highest amount ever paid for a film script. Brando's personal life also made headlines when a woman named Maria Cristina Rees filed a 100 million palimony lawsuit against him in 22. Rees claimed that Brando fathered her three children during a 14-year romantic relationship and demanded damages and living expenses. The lawsuit was settled in April 2003. In addition, Alex Rocco, an Italian-American actor, originally auditioned for the role of Al Neri in The Godfather, but Francis Ford Coppola had other plans. Coppola believed that Rocco would be perfect for the role of Mo Green, a character of Jewish descent. Rocco initially had reservations about playing a character outside of his own ethnicity, but Coppola reassured him with a simple piece of direction. The Italians do this, Coppola said, punching his fingers up. And the Jews do this, he continued, extending his hand with the palm flat. Greatest piece of direction I ever got. I've been playing Jews ever since. Why the peaceful solution is problem? Then we are agreed. The traffic and drugs will be permitted with control. In the film adaptation of The Godfather, Don Cuneo's name was changed from Adelaide to Carmine as a tribute to Carmine Coppola. The studio, Paramount Pictures, aimed for wide appeal and pressured Francis Ford Coppola to add more violence. Connie's crockery smashing scene was a result of this pressure. Michael Corleone and Kay Adams watched The Bells of St. Mary's, a film nominated for Best Picture and the first sequel to receive such a nomination. The Godfather Part II later became the second sequel to be nominated for Best Picture, making the Godfather franchise unique in this regard. <laughs> Sterling Hayden, known for his role in The Godfather, had a complicated personal life, including multiple marriages and divorces with Betty Ann de Noon, which resulted in a bitter custody battle over their four children, James Caan, who played the hot-headed Sonny Corleone, rated The Godfather as a 10 out of 10 in a 1977 interview, where he also shared his ratings for other films he starred in. Caan had positive opinions on his performances in Cinderella Liberty, The Gambler, Funny Lady, Rollerball, The Killer Elite, Harry, and Walter go to New York, Slither, A Bridge Too Far, and Another Man, Another Chance. In Mario Puzo's original novel, the scene where Don Corleone grants requests on his daughter's wedding day was more extensive, featuring more people seeking favors. Interestingly, one of them was named Coppola, who asked for money to start a pizza business. This detail highlights the connection between the novel and the film's director, Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah. Don Nino Rota's composition, the pickup was intended for Tom Hagen's arrival in Hollywood and The Godfather, but the studio opted for a different piece, Manhattan Serenade. Rota's original work was included in the soundtrack album. Francis Ford Coppola drew inspiration from his own family when creating the film's characters, in addition to Mario Puzo's novel. The town square in Sicily holds significance in all three movies. In The Godfather, Michael Corleone passes through it during his exile. In The Godfather Part Roman II, a young Vito Corleone is in front of it when he is smuggled out of Sicily. The square appears again in The Godfather Part Roman III, with Michael and his family present as Anthony performs. Marlon Brando, known for his role in The Wild One, rode his own Triumph Six T Thunderbird during filming. This iconic actor later delivered the famous line, I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse in The Godfather, a line that found its way into every movie in the series. 
Interestingly, Al Martino, who played a significant role in The Godfather, was the son of Italian immigrants and had a childhood friendship with the famed opera singer Mario Lanza. Marlon Brando, known for his role in The Godfather, had a history of joking about sending a cab driver to accept his Oscar. After his first nomination for A Streetcar Named Desire in 1951, he stated he would send a cab driver if he won. Although he didn't attend the ceremony, the question of a cab driver attending in his place remains unanswered. Brando's character, Vito Corleone, required him to wear lifts, as did James Caan, who played Sonny Corleone. The mansion used as Jack Waltz's home in The Godfather was also used in the movie Fletch. This mansion, located in Beverly Hills, has been a popular filming location for many movies. Brando's and Khan's use of lifts in The Godfather was a minor detail, but it helped create the character's physical presence. The use of the same mansion in The Godfather and Fletch highlights the reuse of filming locations in the movie industry. Marlon Brando, known for his role in The Godfather, had a unique approach to managing stress and pain. He was convinced that meditation could help control both, and he decided to prove it in a rather unusual way. In the early 1990s, when he decided to get circumcised, he requested the doctor to perform the operation without anesthesia. Although the doctor refused due to medical ethics, Brando underwent the operation with a painkilling shot in his back. After the operation, he demonstrated his control over his blood pressure by bringing it down more than 20 points through meditation. Sofia Coppola, who also has ties to The Godfather as she appeared in its third installment, was set to direct a live-action adaptation of The Little Mermaid for Universal Pictures in 2014. However, she left the project the following year due to creative differences. Coppola had envisioned shooting the film entirely underwater, with Claude Grace Mortz in the lead role, and Nicole Kidman playing a sea witch. Despite her departure, the film faced further challenges when Walt Disney Pictures announced their own live-action adaptation of the fairy tale. Simonetta Stefanelli, who played Michael Corleone's first wife, Apollonia, in The Godfather, was only 16 during filming, including her topless scene. Stefanelli had previously appeared topless in another film and stated that she didn't enjoy doing so. However, she was willing to do it if the role required it. That son, he's running wild. He's thinking of going to the match. In the movie industry, there are instances where certain cost-saving measures are taken, such as filming extras with wigs and hats to double as main characters, as was the case for Robert Duvall and John Marley in The Godfather. In addition, the composer Nino Rota, despite having his Oscar nomination withdrawn for reusing the same theme from a previous score, still managed to win the Golden Globe, BAFTA, and Grammy for Best Original Score for The Godfather. Interestingly, he went on to win the Oscar for Best Original Score for the sequel, The Godfather Part Room and Two, even though it used the same love theme from the original film. John Cazale, an accomplished actor, played characters named Stan in two different movies, The Conversation and The Deer Hunter. His portrayal of these characters is still remembered today, even though he only appeared in five films during his career before passing away in 1978. In the world of filmmaking, it's not uncommon for composers and actors to reuse theme and characters, but the way it was handled in the Godfather series is still noteworthy. The cost-saving measures and the recognition of Nino Rota's work, despite the controversy, are all part of the film's legacy. Oh! Hey! You look terrific! Al Pacino's career was on the line when he was cast as Michael Corleone in The Godfather, despite frequent rejections and disparaging remarks from studio heads. Both he and director Francis Ford Coppola worked under the constant threat of being fired, but the film's success became a turning point for them. Marlon Brando, who played Vito Corleone, declined offers to reprise his role in The Godfather Part Roman II, and as Jor-El in Superman Roman II, adhering to his personal belief of leaving a role behind once it's completed. Sterling Hayden, who played Captain McCluskey in The Godfather, accepted the role reluctantly due to financial troubles arising from legal battles and child custody issues. He had planned to use the money to fund a sea voyage and leave Hollywood, but ultimately appeared in only one TV show before making Doctor Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. I giovani non hanno più rispetto. Stanno cambiando i tempi, io non lo so come va a finire. 
Marlon Brando, known for his role in The Godfather, made headlines when he put up a 1 million bond to ensure there would be no issues during filming, a promise he kept. Initially, director Francis Ford Coppola submitted a cut running two hours and six minutes, but it was rejected by Paramount Pictures. They demanded a longer version with more focus on the family, resulting in a final release nearly 50 minutes longer than Coppola's original cut. In addition to his acting career, Brando also showed support for the Black Panther Party in the late 70s, donating money and lending his public voice to the cause. His involvement with the party, combined with his iconic role in The Godfather, has solidified Brando's place in film history as a talented and socially conscious actor. Awesome. In the 1972 film The Godfather, the character Johnny Fontaine, a famous singer, was originally intended for either Frankie Avalon or Vic Damon. However, Al Martino was ultimately cast, reportedly using his organized crime connections to secure the part. Interestingly, Fontaine performs I Have But One Heart, which was Damon's first hit song. The wedding sequences in The Godfather were shot using six cameras, including four in the garden for cinema variant shots and a soundman capturing improvised dialogue. A helicopter camera was also used, but many shots were too shaky and discarded. Additionally, Marlon Brando, who plays Vito Corleone in The Godfather, appears on the cover of the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album, portraying his character from the 1953 film The Wild One. When we make our move there, you're gonna be my right-hand man. In the 1972 film The Godfather, Richard Kant has a limited role, appearing in only four scenes and speaking in just one, which is the meeting of the Dons. Interestingly, Marlon Brando, who received lead billing, has a screen time of less than one hour. On the music front, Morgana King recorded mine for the Taking Dare Wind on Das Mir for a 45 Mercury record 7967 in 1965 in New York, USA, but it was not specifically for the movie. In the original script of The Godfather, Michael Corleone's speech to Apollonia's father was written in Sicilian, but due to Al Pacino's limited proficiency, Francis Ford Coppola rewrote the scene to have Michael speak English. When Marlon Brando won the Best Actor Oscar for his role as Vito Corleone, he sent Sasheen Littlefeather to decline the award on his behalf, using the opportunity to speak about the mistreatment of Native Americans in the film industry. This was not Brando's first time causing a stir in Hollywood. Film critic Rex Reed once described his speech in the 1966 film The Chase as sounding like he had a mouth full of wet toilet paper. Do you know who I am? I'm Mo Green. I made my bones when you were going out with... In the scene where Connie, played by Talia Shire, is beaten by Carlo in The Godfather. Shire is actually speaking to herself as she provides the voice on the other end of the phone. Shire has a notable connection to the film, having appeared in four movies directed by her older brother. Francis Ford Coppola, The Godfather, The Godfather Part Room in 2, New York Stories, and The Godfather Part Room in 3. Interestingly, while filming Sonny's affair scene with Lucy, an unexpected event occurred. Eleanor Coppola, Francis's wife, went into labor. After completing the scene, Francis went to the hospital, where Sophia Coppola, their daughter, was born. This behind-the-scenes information adds a unique layer to the film's production history. I'll handle it. I told you I can handle it. I'll handle it. The creation of the 1972 movie, The Godfather, involves some interesting decisions and outcomes. Initially, Francis Ford Coppola intended to begin the film with the wedding scene, introducing all characters at once. However, inspired by the opening scene of Patton, he rewrote the beginning with the Bonacera scene instead. In the film, Marlon Brando's portrayal of Don Vito Corleone displayed authenticity as Al Pacino later revealed that Brando's tears in the hospital scene were genuine when Michael pledged himself to his father. The Godfather also contributed to popular culture through its dialogue. For instance, Sonny's expression going to the mattresses became a popular phrase still used today, half a century later. This phrase refers to the act of preparing for a mob war by converting a building into a fortress, filling it with mattresses to absorb bullets. In the scene of The Godfather where Carlo is attacked by Sonny, a poster of Thomas E. Dewey is visible, 
Dewey, who served as governor of New York during the time period depicted in the film, was known for his successful pursuit of gangsters in his previous roles as chief assistant U.S. attorney and district attorney of New York County. Diane Keaton, who plays a significant role in The Godfather, has appeared in four films that have been deemed culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant by the Library of Congress. These films include The Godfather and The Godfather Part II, as well as Annie Hall and Manhattan. Marlon Brando, who portrays the titular character in The Godfather, was known for his eccentric behavior on set. During the filming of the score in 2001, he refused to be on set at the same time as director Frank Oz, reportedly referring to him as Miss Piggy. The exterior shots of Jack Waltz's estate in The Godfather were filmed at the residence of silent film star Harold Lloyd, while interior scenes were shot at the Guggenheim Estate in Long Island. The art in the Guggenheim Estate was so valuable that guards had to be hired for protection during filming. Even the bed where Waltz finds the horse's head was rented for the scene. Diane Keaton, who played Kay Adams in the film, had plans to direct a remake of The Blue Angel with Madonna in the lead role. However, the project was eventually cancelled. Marlon Brando, who played the iconic role of Don Vito Corleone, had a love for comedy and named Charles Chaplin, Stan Laurel, and Oliver Hardy, W.C. Field, Wally Cox, Woody Allen, and Don Rickles as his favorite comedians. However, he did not hold the March Brothers in high regard, considering them embarrassing. Brando's performance in The Godfather earned him an Academy Award for Best Actor, despite his controversial opinions on comedy. Gambling, a casino, and we hope you'll sign a contract that will appear five times a year. Talia Shire, known for her role as Connie Corleone in the Godfather series, has been associated with four films nominated for Best Picture at the Academy Awards. Interestingly, her brother, Francis Ford Coppola, directed her in The Godfather Part II, making her the only person to receive an Oscar nomination due to sibling direction. Al Pacino, who played Michael Corleone, was not initially interested in film and had never made a choice in his career to act in films. However, when Coppola approached him for the role, Pacino was intrigued, despite his initial skepticism about the director's ability to handle such a significant project. Coppola had always envisioned Pacino as Michael Corleone, and after several discussions, Pacino accepted the part. The casting of Pacino in the role of Michael Corleone was a significant decision, as he brought a unique perspective to the character, making him relatable and authentic. Coppola's vision for the character and Pacino's portrayal of him have left an indelible mark on cinema history. In summary, the casting of Talia Shire and Al Pacino in the Godfather series was a crucial factor in the film's success. Their contributions to the series, along with their director's vision, have left a lasting impact on the film industry. On my territory. In the classic film, The Godfather, an ad-lib line by John Martino added a touch of authenticity when he said Madone, and as Fortunato during the scene where Polly discusses stealing the wedding purse. The film's young star, Sofia Coppola, appeared in eight of her father Francis Ford Coppola's movies, including The Godfather, The Godfather Part Room 2, and The Godfather Part Roman 3. Interestingly, in a real-life imitation of the movie, mob boss Johnny Camino threatened the CEO of Paramount, which led to Gianni Russo being cast as Carlo in The Godfather. The film's influence extended beyond the screen, affecting the lives of those involved in its production. With its compelling storyline and memorable performances, The Godfather remains a classic in the world of cinema. Hey, Bafangu, eh? If you have memories and experiences related to the 1972 movie The Godfather, please share them with us. This film has left a lasting impression on many, shaping their perspective on cinema and leaving a personal impact. We'd love to hear how this classic has influenced your life. Did it inspire you to explore the world of filmmaking, or perhaps it made you appreciate the art of storytelling? Whatever your connection to The Godfather, we encourage you to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more cinematic explorations. Together, let's celebrate the power of movies and the role they play in our lives. Join the conversation and let us know your thoughts on this iconic film.